that would help. Okay, guys. <laughs> So let me kind of repeat some information here. Um, what we're going to be covering today is printing large garments uh, or big designs. A um, couple of little supplies that I have is the 20 by 25 heat press by Geo Knight, um, Air Assist, Swing Away. Um, what I'm doing right now, that y'all probably saw in the video but didn't have audio with it for a little bit, was the pretreatment process. All right, if I'm going to be doing oversized prints, the best process is, is to probably hand spray them. So that way you can control how much pre-treat, where it goes, and everything like that. Okay, let's see what we got here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm letting the heat press hover so I can let a lot of this moisture, and let me bring this over. It's got a lot of moisture on the pre-treat here, to let it diffuse into the actual shirt. All right, because right now it looks nice, wet, and shiny. So let me bring this back over and we're going to hover this without any paper on it and just let it sit here and hover for a little while. Now I have turned off my air by pushing this little button right here and I can use it as a timer. So let that sit there with just indirect heat. What that will do is let the pretreatment diffuse into the cotton and then go from there. All right, let me turn this autofocus on so it's not so blurry. Just a second, guys. Turn this autofocus off. There we go. Apply and OK. All right. So let's see here. Let's see how this is doing. Still a little damp. This is a district apparel shirt. Oops, don't want to get caught up in there. And then I'll move it down to the bottom and let it diffuse this down here too. It's not actually in the uh, in the print field, but I want to make sure everything diffuses so that way the shirt's not shiny once I get ready to print it. Okay. Swing that back around. Pull this up a little bit. We'll let that diffuse a little bit. Okay, so let's go back over here and discuss these platens. I know I've touched base on them uh, just a little while ago, but the M2, uh, just with the standard platens and stuff, what that can do is you can use the um, both of the platens while they're still on the machine, and you can stretch a garment all the way across it and then tuck it in accordingly. All right. Sometimes you might have to use tape down here on the ends, or something to that order, or kind of stretch it down and tuck it under, so that way this bottom collar is not sitting up here on the top, because that would make the print area too low, and then you'd have a blurry print. Okay. Then you also have other um, accessory platens that you can use. My favorite, the 16 by 20. All right. That's basically the uh, size of a standard heat press, so I like to print images with inside this, and that way I only have to do a single pressing. Okay, the next one is the oversize, which is the exact same size as two adult platens, just without the space in the middle. As you can see, it's basically the same down here on the bottom. Okay. So actually what we're going to do, I'm going to use that oversize one. Set these platens out of the way here. This is a great platen for doing like beach towels, anything that's going to be really oversized prints. Okay. Let's see how she's doing over here. Sure I don't have any of the fuzz sticking up or anything like that. Still got a little bit pre-treat. I might have went a little bit too heavy on this. Let me see what pre-treat I might Okay. All right, so while that's prepping, then I'm going to go ahead and click back over here to my Photoshop. So let me switch off the video real quick. And we're going to pull up some designs that we're going to print oversized. All right, let's see what we got here. So, yeah, I had to name this one uh, Tips for Printing Big. So I had to find a bunch of images that say big. <laughs> So let's see. Let's go with uh, Biggie Smalls here. That would be a good one for a dark shirt. All right. 
So right now, a lot of images that you can get are pretty small. Like this one itself is like three and a half inches. So I'm going to show you kind of how to, uh, some little tips and tricks of how to maximize the size of things without compromising the design. All right. So let's see. Let's go ahead and do a new document. All right. We'll take it up to 300 DPI. And we'll make the size of it. We'll just do we'll just do a US piece of paper, eight and a half by eleven. And I'm gonna make sure it's gonna have a transparent background as well. Alright, so we click OK. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to my image. I'm going to drag this image or separate it from the page here. So that way I can just take my move tool, drag it, and drop it right over here into the eight and a half by eleven. Alright, so now I'm gonna close the original. All right, so before I do any kind of sizing or anything to this, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to convert it to a smart object. What that does is lock in the DPI that it started with and this pixel uh, uh, ratio as well. So from here, when I transform it, it'll look pixelated at first as I drag it out, but then once I uh, confirm the transformation, it will definitely uh, crispen back up. So we'll hit Enter, and there we go. So now I just took that little bitty tiny image and expanded it out without losing any of its uh, pixel ratio. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and trim this so that way it gets rid of the excess transparency. We'll trim off transparent pixels. So now we got our original image that's now 8.5 uh, by about almost 10. Okay, so from here this is going to be a dark shirt design. So probably what I want to do is make the canvas bigger so that way it doesn't have squared off edges. I'm not the biggest fan of those. So let's see what we can do with this. Let's go image canvas size. So we'll take this up to about, let's go 15 inches tall and the width about 10. All right. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can see our entire document. I'll get rid of this transparent layer. It's not really needed. All right, but then I'm going to add a solid color background behind it. So go up here, I click on the little uh, masking tools, and go to solid color. And then I'm going to drag it down to black because we're going to do a black shirt design. Okay, so now it covered up the logo, so all I have to do is drag this layer below this one. If any of your screen is covered up by the GoToMeeting control panel or anything like that, there's uh, you can do minimize it or anything like that, and you should still have control. All right, so now when looking at this, I can just see that it's got um, really squared off edges and stuff like that. But I think I can doctor this up and make it look a little bit neater so it kind of like hovers in the middle of the shirt. Let's go with like a paintbrush tool. I'll switch to black. And make sure I'm on the correct layer. Oh, since it's a uh, smart object, I have to uh, rasterize it first. So by rasterizing, it takes away that the smart object stuff. Or I could take it into the actual smart object itself. Let's do this. If you double click on the little smart object icon, it goes in here. And then I can use this to kind of fade things out. Let's see, let's make this design a little bit smaller. And then the brush size, the hardness is going to be at zero. And then I can sit there and just kind of fade around the edges here so that way it kind of makes it kind of hover so it doesn't have an edge to it. This should look pretty neat when it's done. Okay, let's see. I don't know if that big square behind him is going to work out. So let's see. So once we hit um, update, so we try to close this page out, it'll ask us to save it. So we hit yes, and then it auto updates the original file. All right. So now I have all this covered up in here, and it's a little bit more iconic. Let's see. Let's go image trim here to trim off any uh, excess. So we'll go top left pixel color, so that way it'll trim off the black. 
All right, so now we've got a pretty square image um, and it's not really, doesn't have any really hard edges to it. So that's going to look pretty good on a, um, on a black shirt. So let's save this real quick. Control S. And we'll call this one, we're going to save this originally. Let's go, oops. I get rid of the JPEG off the end of it, and then hit save. All right, so the first one we're going to be doing is on this big oversized print. So let's minimize Photoshop, minimize my uh, browser here, my bridge, and then we're going to go black shirts, we're going to do black best. Um, black graphics best is, uh, graphics is more of a saturated print, so this is kind of a black and white, so I think it'll be all right with just doing the uh, black best on here. Choose my template first, which is the one up. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and import that image. Let's go back to Heath and Big and Biggie Smalls. Okay, so now from here, I can rotate it to the direction I'm going to print it. I can maximize the size of it. And then I can control how far down it is. I'll go like two inches down from the top. So right now, this is going to be printed at 18 and a half inches by 16 and a half inches. <coughs> okay. So let's see what this is going to look like before we print it. So from here, I'm going to rasterize it, uh, basically meaning I'm going to rip it without printing it. It'll also give me my job cost, but I have an option to use Raw View. Raw View is uh, just like a little plugin they have for the RIP software here that lets you view the dots that are going to be printed, the dot information. So that way you can see if stuff's out in left field or something like that. So this oversized print is only going to be $2.28. So let's see. Let's review that. Um, view raw data. And it's just a representation. It does not represent color. Okay. It just represents uh, pixel for pixel ratio. So if I hit escape, I can stop the processing. Let's zoom out a little bit further. And then I'm going to stop it again by holding escape, so that way I can change the background color, because I want to see what it's going to look like, uh, see what the white layer looks like, and things like that. So I like switching it to this dark gray. And then when I hit OK, now I can see what actual ink is going to be printed. And seeing if I need to do any kind of more edits to it or anything like that. Which it looks like I might have to. So I'm going to let it finish. I can't change anything or choose a different tool uh, while that thing's processing or this little uh, spinner's going because uh, it will error out the system and have to close that window. So this would be what the underbase and the color looks like. So let's see. Let's turn off layer two, and it will show me just the white that it's going to print. So that's my underbase there. It doesn't look that bad. The black printing over the edges kind of helps it fade into the uh, into the black of the shirt. So, no glitz, no glory, right? Let's go ahead and uh, see what this thing prints like. All right, so we've got that. Let me go ahead and turn back on the camera here. See if our shirt's ready. All right. So definitely a little bit drier now. It does not look saturated wet. So let's bring this back up here. I'm going to press it just like I would a normal shirt. All right, make sure there's no wrinkles up underneath there that's going to get smashed into it, causing a hump. 
Oh, you probably would like to see that. Put my protective paper up here. Slide this sucker over. And we'll press it for like 15 seconds. Oops, with the arrow. There it goes. Okay. And I'm using about 20 PSI on this thing. 20 to anywhere between 20 and 50 is fine. The lower the PSI, the less pressure you'll have. Uh, the higher the PSI, um, the, the, or I'm sorry, the higher the PSI, the more pressure you'll have. The lower, uh, the less pressure. So I'll go ahead and let that go. Looks like a piece of paper stuck. So the paper should just float right off of the shirt. That's the biggest thing, because if you had any kind of adhesion of the uh, release paper to the shirt, you're definitely going to be pulling fuzz back up. So a little habit of mine, I'll press it once, let it pop, and then I'll press it a second time for about five seconds or so, and it usually gives me a good result. Set these to the side here. Okay. So now with that all pressed, we'll come back over here to the machine. Normally I would be doing this on a table, but I can do it directly up here on the machine, sort of like if, if I had the, uh, the regular two-up platens on there. All right. Square it up nice and centered. Reaching over to the inside here really helps as well, so that way you can square it up. If you're short, you might want to get a stool. All right. Top, top in first. That gives me my anchor. Square up the bottom. I try to keep my hands across from each other when I do this, and I try to do a little bit at a time. I'm trying not to stretch the shirt, just keep it taut. And then the same thing, I'll do a little bit here and there, top, bottom, to make sure it just spreads nicely. You can hear the uh, bed system lowering in the background, but that's no big deal. we got to raise it up and check the height of it anyway. All right, tuck the excess under, make sure nothing's sticking up in the corners, things like that. Put it in about an inch, raise it up until it stops. And then me personally, I like to push it in slowly to kind of scan the top edge of it. The load loads faster than I can push it, or it doesn't load slow enough as, the, as slow as I can push it with my hand, so that way it catches those little things a little bit easier. And then I tap load once it's inside the cover. Okay, so now I'm just going to quickly switch back over to my uh, RIP software so I can make sure I have my port configuration. I haven't used this computer in here all day, so I just want to make sure. Manage queues. I'm in the black best queue. I can always stretch this out to see what USB number it's on. And it's going to be on USB 2. So I hit yes. And then close. All right. So now I can hit print. And we're going to see what this looks like. So this is printing at a higher resolution. Um, I wanted a nice solid underbase. Just depends. I mean, after I print my first sample of something that I've never printed before, then I can make adjustments to it. All right, let me put back on the camera real quick so that way y'all can see it printing. So definitely with these oversized prints and stuff, you'll definitely want to um, uh, charge more for them because they do take longer to print. You're printing them one at a time. Um, there's not many other options out there uh, for people to go get these oversized prints. So they are kind of a commodity. All right. 
Well, it looks like I didn't have my PSI set on my uh, heat press well enough and it didn't give enough pressure. Let's see what it looks like when I press it. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to show y'all an actual trick that you can use if a mistake happens. This is one of those fix on the fly type of moments. One thing I notice while this thing's printing, and you can't really see it, I'll show you after uh, it ejects after doing the wipe. I noticed that it didn't have enough pressure, so do, I do have fuzz sticking up on the shirt. So once I, if I put a color pass on that and that fuzz is still sticking up and it's painted white, then I'm going to get all those little white speckles in my image. All right, can become very frustrating. So I'm going to show you a little trick to get rid of them and not ruin a shirt. I'm actually going to stop this print right in the middle of it. Uh, basically, right after it finishes the white layer. And then I'm going to do a little magic. And then we'll reset the RIP software and the machine to print the color layer. It's a cool little trick. A lot of people don't know you can do it. It almost looks pretty cool just in black and white. <laughs> a lot of images do. Does anybody have any questions as of right now or anything that they've missed or anything like that? There is some new stuff coming out on the horizon uh, that's some good news. Um, we're in the middle of doing some testing on a new kind of all-in-one ultra pretreatment for the M2. Uh, so that way there's going to be one pretreatment for both light and dark garments, and it'll have a better hand, and you won't get as much of a stiff, shiny feeling on the uh, shirts when you print them. So definitely keep in touch with that. We'll, we'll be uh, advertising it on our um, website as soon as we have everything locked into place. And I will be doing instructional videos and stuff like that to show the new pretreatment processes. So stay tuned. So just looking at this, if I was probably going to print this again, I might lighten up that background or darken up the background behind him. So that way it's not as much like white in these areas over around the crown and stuff. Almost done there. So basically what I'm going to do, since I noticed that this thing's really fuzzy looking, I'm going to stop it as soon as it starts to retract. Or as soon as it finishes the white layer, the last uh, pass of white. So I'll just pop the emergency stop, and then I'll reset the machine and reset the software. Dude, I might even add something to this. <laughs> okay, almost done with the last few swipes. But you know what they say. I love it when they call me Big Papa.
All right. So I'll go ahead and emergency stop it. Lock that back into place. And what I'll do is without moving the platen whatsoever, I can pull the bed out. So I'll just grab it from the bottom and just pull it out gently. So that way I can see the whole shirt. All right. So now let's see if I can show you the fuzz on this thing. Let's see if I can lower this down a little bit. And you can see it from this level. I don't know if it shows the actual fuzz or not here. Let's see if I can pull this off for a second. Go right there at that level. See all that fuzz sticking up? It's kind of hard to see on camera, but that's what we're going to address. All right, so check this out. So what I'm going to do is take a fresh piece of release paper, and I'm going to place it right up here on the shirt. Once it's uh, laid down, I do not kind of scrub it or anything, but I'll anchor it with a finger, and then I'll smooth my hand across it, basically pushing that fuzz right back down onto itself. Oh, ancient Chinese secret. All right, then I'll take the paper up gently, Flip it over because I don't want to transfer if any kind of wet white ink got on my paper or anything. I don't want to transfer it, so I just flip it over and do the bottom half down here. Because if you've got it pre-treated correctly, it should not. Um, the white ink should be kind of congealed into the shirt itself. So now I'm going to look at the shirt again. And I don't really see any fuzz sticking up. All right. So let's reset the machine now. So pretty cool image so far. Whoops, sorry guys. Sorry about the roller coaster. <laughs> there we go. Maybe we'll edit that part out. <laughs> All right, so here's our image here. Yep, Mr. Mark Stevenson, our marketing director, just walked in, and he's just giggly. I am, I am excited about this uh, because actually I, I want a big T-shirt. So All right. Can we put Dream Big down here? Which? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that looks, that looks terrific. So how big is the image? Um, it is about 16 and a half by about just less than 24. I didn't go all the way to the edge. So. Wow. Yeah, so it's one of the largest print builds in the entire industry. So it's yeah, one of no, the great that, things about it. it. There's nothing that'll print bigger. <laughs> So, I'll just reset this up, reload it, and then I'll start doing the resetting of the RIP software next. So, we'll go ahead and hit load. All right, so let's go back over here to the computer real quick, and let me show you how to reset and only send the color information. So, I'll turn the camera off real quick. All right, so in here, I've got a holding error on my RIP software because it did not finish the print. So I'll clear the error first. And then I'm going to open the page back up. So that way I can get rid of the underbase information and print just the color information. So I'm going to right click on it, uh, go open page. So I make sure not to move it because I want it to be in the exact same position. So then instead of changing my Q properties, I'm going to change the job properties by double-clicking the job name. It'll bring up the job ticket properties. So then I can go to that same print mode overrides and layer profiles. And then you'll notice you have your underbase layer and your color layer. So look what we have up here. Remove. So now it's only the color information. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. well, the reason we did that is yeah. um, the heat press, the this first time I've used the uh, 20 by 25, yeah. the pressure on it was a little bit low, so it didn't press the fibers down really well. Okay. So I had little fuzzies sticking up. So gotcha. I used that as a teaching lesson to sit here and say, hey, this is what you can do if you make a mistake. Okay. So I just stopped it right after the white layer and then put a piece of the release paper on it, smoothed, smoothed the, it the fuzz in it, the color. and then print the color That's after. That's a great save. Mm -hmm. So we'll hit OK here. And then we'll hit print. I'll rip it first. So we'll see what the color information was. How much was the white? It was two, I think 228 was the entire print. Okay. And, and you're, you're the, in the high quality mode, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. All 
All right, 16 cents of color. <laughs> okay. It's mainly black, so. All right, so let's go ahead and hit print here, and I'll turn back on the camera. Stretch this out a little bit. Let's bring this back over so we can see it. I almost caught myself. You can watch Biggie come alive, but uh too soon. <laughs> See, you're you're assuming that Biggie's dead. Yeah. Uh, no, they're on a tropical island, hitting Tupac, sipping margaritas. Okay, okay. Yeah. Bruce Lee and Elvis. Yeah. Um, Google. Okay. I typed in the word big. Okay. And, <laughs> and of course, of, Biggie comes up. What kind of a file was it? Just a JPEG. JPEG. So the first part of this video, I went through and kind of showed um, how to change a low-res image to a high-res, bigger right. image without messing with the image integrity. Right. I mean, still, you know, it's not going to be like you took a photo from a raw file into a PSD. Correct. Well, it's basically I'm creating a PSD from a very tiny image. It right. started at three inches wide oh, by, by four. Okay. And now I'm blowing it up to almost 20 something inches tall. Yeah. So there is the capability of doing that stuff and learning your Photoshop and the tools and how to use them really makes a difference. I think we might have to fight over this shirt. <laughs> It'll be a nightshirt for either one of us. It's a 2X. Exactly. You have to do the big shirt of Biggie. So. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but the detail that these things can get is just amazing. I'm... I'm that's what I was going to say. I'm impressed that you got this from a JPEG, mm -hmm. a small JPEG. That looks good. But doing these oversized prints, having that extra large heat press really is essential. Because if you try to do something this large on, say, just the standard heat press, you'll have a press line uh, inside it because of the two separate yeah. pressings that you have You're to do. You're going to have to work harder. Yes. You're going to have to work harder. It still looks good, right. but it's not as efficient. So if you're going to do stuff like this under production, you would have like two sets of uh, platens, so that way you have one ready to go and one on the machine, yeah. and then have the heat presses that you need so it's just quick, efficient, bam, bam, insert money into pocket. Yeah. And you'll definitely be the only one in town that is printing this big. Of course, the other thing is this is not a fast process. No, this it's a is. Big shirt. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be twice as fast, literally, if this was on a white shirt. Correct. Correct. But if this is a big shirt and a big print. You're not, you're not going to be doing twenty of these an hour. No. You're going to be mm -hmm. doing four, five. Yes. So you definitely have to charge accordingly. Yeah. Uh, anywhere from thirty to forty dollars a shirt. Yeah. So you just have to get the proper artwork on there.
And I probably could have sped it up a little ways uh, by, since it was not a really uh, vibrant color poppy type of image, then I probably could have printed it on the fast mode and probably gained about a quarter to another third of speed right. and still had that because certain images, they look better subdued into the shirt a little bit to maybe yeah. give it that little bit of an aged look. Where some stuff like cartoonish type graphics or logos, you they need that pop. really solid poppy color. Yeah, the, I mean, what you see mostly out there lately is distressed. If you go into a, you go into a retail spot, you're going to see a lot of distress. Correct. And you don't need really high resolution. It's more comfortable, too. It's not as much ink on the shirt. Right. <laughs> All right. So definitely once this comes off, we treat it like our normal dark shirts, and we will heat press it and be done with it. Let me go ahead and get my heat press timer set up for the two minutes. All right, I'm going to go get some parchment paper to give it a smooth matte finish as well. All right. So let's flip this thing up so we can see what it really looks like. All right. Bring this camera in a little bit closer here. That looks good. That looks so good. For a low-res image that I got off of Google. Yeah, that looks great. Mm -hmm. So certain images aren't copyrighted and stuff. It's not like I'm going to go out and sell this without talking to a copyright attorney or a small business attorney to find out if I have the rights to do that or what I need to do to create it. All right. So then from here, raw. Definitely going to let this hover because I definitely see a little bit of fuzz still on there. But I'm going to let it hover for probably about a minute. Kind of dries the outside of the ink a little bit more. So what I do is just turn the air off start my timer. And George Knight did this just for us. Correct. Yeah, they have a, a very unique hover feature where it hovers about a half inch above the shirt. None of the other heat presses on the market right now actually do that. Right. And then you can control that height by your knob back here. Yep. So again, if you're going to do um, all over prints, if you're going to do big prints, if you're going to do blankets or towels or oh yeah, very essential. Stand, I mean, very you, essential. You like Plus, it's cool. It's got air. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely, <laughs> definitely going to want that. All right, so let's go ahead and press it now. I think that'll be enough time for the hover. Turn the air back on. All right. Press it for two minutes. Then it's done. Okay. So let's see here. How are we looking on time? Right, it's about done on those. We could go through and print some more, but definitely keep in, uh, keep track of these tech talks and stuff. We'll be retitching on them, and then if I come up with like new subjects to talk about and uh, things like that, just keep turning tuning into these uh, tech talks and learn as much as you can. Knowledge is power. Yeah. All right. All right. So what did we use today? We used the M2 with the XL platen. Correct. We use the Spider Mini for pre treat. Correct. And we're using the um, DK25 SP. Mm hmm. How long did that shirt take to print? 
Um, probably about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. And is this the 2XL shirt? Mm -hmm. It just fit better over the double XL. Yeah, yeah. It's that's for a big shirt. Mm -hmm. So if you own a big and tall shop, definitely get two of these. And like that, it is done. So let's see how big this thing is comparison to my body. Yeah. A lot of we got a lot of uh, a lot of pictures and video of you standing in front of a shirt. Sure. In front of a big shirt. Yep. Yeah. Okay, hold still. Let me take a picture of that because that's a pretty good one. Steve and Vicky. Scary. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, let me show you a little bit closer. All right. So yeah, highly detailed resolutions. Nice soft hands. From a tiny JPEG. From a tiny JPEG. Here, toss it over. All right. All right, uh, guys. That will conclude this Tech Talk. Um, if you have any questions, uh, fill those out real quick before we sign off, and uh, we'll go from there. Y'all have a great day.